Now, night time usually means, well, for myself anyway, drawing the curtains and sitting down in front of the TV. But if you happen to cast your eyes to the sky next week, he could be in for a treat. Yeah, it's here to explain more is David Moore of Astronomy Ireland. Lovely to see you again, David. Good morning. Thanks very it much. It is a very busy week. There's loads going on. It is. This week is National Science Week. And if you go along to our website, I think you'll see we have about 20 or 30 events planned for the week. Still some to come, including the big exhibition on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And it'll link to the national site where other institutions are organising, I think, over 500 events all across the country. So there's bound to be more on for the next few days. OK, part of that is the Astro Expo. Yeah, this is our big annual exhibition. This year, uh, we actually have an, a rocket group, the Tripoli Rocket Group, who are coming along. They'll have actual rockets. Now, they don't get quite into space, but this is how you start out launching a few rockets and seeing how, how it goes. That's how ultimately we came to our space program. And they'll be our main exhibitor, but there'll be telescopes galore, lots of other exhibits as well. Mm. And there are always three big talks linked to the, what we call Astro Expo on Saturday. It's in Trinity College. And the three talks are about radio astronomy in Ireland. This is how the big boys want to get into astronomy in Ireland. It's too cloudy here in Ireland to have a giant multi-million euro telescope. So they're going to do it with radio astronomy. At least that's one plan. There's also a talk on cosmology. Okay. How does the universe work? And there'll be the talk by David Grennan that we, we, we talked about a, f a few weeks ago when he discovered the first supernova found from Ireland, mm -hmm. a million, million times brighter than the sun. And this is his first public appearance to explain how he did it. All right, well, that, that's, worth, that's worth going to. Yeah. Uh, the moon and Jupiter, uh, if we look to the skies, they're actually cuddling up, so it would seem. Yes, now, uh, there are lo lots of other events for Science Week, uh, but if you look to next week, then on Monday, we have the, uh, the moon near Jupiter. Mm -hmm. And I think we have a diagram which shows the we moon. Do. It's on yeah. screen right there. Uh, one day we have the, the, the Jupiter just to the right of the moon, and the next night it'll have moved just above the moon. So hopefully one of those two will be clear, mm -hmm. and you'll be able to identify the planet Jupiter. It's at its closest, closest it's been for, for 50 years mm -hmm. this year. A fantastic sight in a telescope. So is the moon. So if you've got a telescope, do take them and have a look at the mm -hmm. two up close. This, that's going to be one of the best nights. And then we move on, I think, to Wednesday when we have the best, one of the best shooting star showers of the year. Yeah. Call the Leone, it's every 33 years or so, if we're lucky, it storms, it bursts into activity. But it'll still, uh, that's not expected to happen this year, but it'll still increase the numbers of shooting stars seen in the middle of next week by a factor of five or six. So it's a good week for watching shooting stars next week. So some, some celestial fireworks. Yeah. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I, we have, of course, uh, is the International Space yeah. Station. Uh, we're, that's flying over every night this week. It'll fly over tonight and every night till next Monday. And the last time it was on two weeks ago, it, w it had just started yeah. flying over. Uh, we have a special text service. I don't know if we have the caption for that. If you text the word space to 57003, for a euro a day, we'll tell you exactly when to see it. It's on screen. And on screen we, uh, right we have some footage. You won't see that now if you're looking up at the sky, though. Will you, will you need yeah. it? Will this you is need taken from inside. From outside, it looks like a brilliant star. Mm -hmm. zooming across the sky. Could you just see it with the naked eye or do you need binoculars? It is about a hundred times... Or is it not times, binoculars? No, a hundred times brighter than the brightest star in the sky, so it's, it's absolutely unmistakable. All you need to know is the exact time. You don't need to be standing outdoors for too long in this cold weather. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the International Space Station. We were hoping that the Space Shuttle was going to be launched to it and we'd get to see it chasing the Space Station yeah. across the sky. There was one delay after another till eventually something went wrong and they've scrubbed the launch until okay. November the 30th. So no space chase. And there'll only be two more shuttle missions and that's it for the space shuttle fleet. It's going to be scrapped. Well, it's, it's, it's quite unfortunate. You, you've, you've got some set of glasses there beside you. Yeah, these are a pair of binoculars that we sell in our shop. Uh, they're actually the smallest pair we sell. Just to show how big a pair of binoculars you need for astronomy. And with these, I was looking at the, the a comet. That's, it's on the edge of naked eye visibility. So I this think this is Hartley. one for the experts. Yeah, Comet Hartley. But in the news on November the 4th was a spacecraft flew past Comet Hartley. It's only the fifth spacecraft to take a picture up close of the little dirty snowball at the centre of the comet. <laughs> now I say little, it's about two kilometres long and 500 metres across. So it's a big snowball by our standards, but relatively you can see it on screen right now. Yeah, and there's, the pictures are fantastic and they'll be appearing in our magazine next month. There are lots more pictures mm. than that. It was a fantastically successful mission. Only the fifth comet ever to be photographed up close uh, by a spacecraft and everything worked perfectly after all those years in space.
If anybody wants to hear more about space, you're doing a talk tonight in Trinity College. That's right, yeah, I'm giving a talk on the universe as part of National Science Week. It's, it's on 8 o'clock in Trinity College in the physics building. More details are on the website as well. And it's about the universe, but we're going to explain a whistle-stop tour of starting from the Earth, moving out into the universe. Everything you ever want to know about space. There's a Listoon Varna in space, That's a right. Connemara in space, the Irish invented astronomy. There's lots more things like that. We're going to tell you how the universe is going to end. And if that's I don't not know if I want you, to know that. If that's not <laughs> on Saturday, the big talk, one of the big talks, Astro Expo, continues on that theme on cosmology. So okay. it's, a f it's a fantastic week, an okay. awful lot crammed into one. And the latest magazine is out as well. Yep, that's it. Our magazine for November is out, everything from U2 to the space station. Okay. And it'll tell, it's aimed at beginners. We're looking for new members. It'll cost you 55 cents a week. So if you're that interested in astronomy, do okay. join up. Astronomy.ie is the website or call Astronomy Ireland. It sounds like it's a very, very, very busy time for you guys. It certainly is. National Science Week is always busy, but this year the theme is Our Place in Space, so we're delighted to see that, and we hope everyone's going to get involved. David, right, David as ever, thank you, so thank you for coming on. Okay. Now, I don't